Uh, on the other hand, if you if you were if I was to ask you which is one company, Indian company, in the past two hundred years which would come to the mind as a highly ethical company, and uh, I would expect you know would be Tata, Tata. <laughs> right? So I mean, past one fifty two hundred, I mean, come what may, there are other companies which have come and gone, but uh, they remain true. I mean, they kind of embody the Indians uh, that spirit of being compliant. I mean, uh, whether if you talk about Ratan Tata in the current leaving industrial. person probably the most uh, highly regarded respected individual yes, that we have and indeed that comes that that comes from that culture and that is how they have grown the so long term sustenance that's what it, it brings the uh, culture of compliance and ethics I am Jitendra Singh, banker turned entrepreneur and author of the book Pep Hack: Mastering the Art of Selling. I welcome you to read my story where I interview authors, speakers, coaches, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and more. Today I have with me Mr. Pradeep Gopal Krishnan. He is a mechanical engineer with a diverse career spanning various industries from development and manufacturing to hospitality, healthcare, e-commerce, and retail. He started as a gear cutting technologist. He quickly took on on roles in uh, custom clearing and learned through hands-on experiences with nearly 15 years of experience in organizations ranging from unlisted public limited companies to mnc pradeep sir has um, now serving as an entrepreneur his expertise lies in human resources especially talent acquisition and management performance appraisal goal setting training and development and uh, total rewards during his tenure with motorola a leading telecom mnc in the early days of uh, Uh, wireless communication he has played a pivot role in setting up the mobile telephone uh, infrastructure in india his exceptional uh, project execution resulted in recognition and rewards at both at regional and global levels throughout his career uh, pradeep sir has demonstrated leadership integrated and compliance with uh, organizations like motorola installing a strong culture of ethics and integrity alongside his professional achievements he is in uh, adventure fusion just having participated on rock climbing trekking uh, white water kayaking scuba diving and even embarked on a solo bike ride to ladakh he is passionate about renewable energy and compliance and he is uh, dedicated to promoting uh, corruption free society and utilizing his expertise in governance and renewable energy for the betterment of corporate world and indian society as a whole so today he will be discussing with us about his life journey welcome pradeep sir the platform is open and now over to you Thanks, Jitendra. I've been. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for inviting me, and it's a pleasure to be chatting. So it would be entirely my pleasure to have you here, sir. It would be like uh, you have a huge experience, which definitely would uh, be very useful for everyone who is listening today. So, uh, if I ask you about your past life, how it has affected the person you actually wanted to be in your life, and what you are. Okay. So uh, yeah, you, you really take me back uh, to, to, to my early childhood. Lord, I guess. So, I mean, I was hugely influenced with my, by my father, and uh, so my father. Uh, so, as the, my name suggests, I am from Kerala, uh, South India. Uh, but my father moved to Delhi sometime in 1948, and okay. so um, just after independence. So, and he was a Gandhian. He had a aim to, you know, kind of join Gandhi Ji in his uh, efforts and all. But uh, unfortunately, during his uh, journey, he was trying to make towards Delhi. Uh, Gandhi Ji got ex- assassinated in. so he ended up reaching delhi and then in a newly independent india he joined the defense ministry so he joined the defense ministry and in his uh, as a civilian but then he did have opportunity to work with some very senior army and air force officers uh, he went to korea along with the indian peacekeeping force he he was posted in moscow when during my childhood uh, he was posted in moscow for about 5 years so all these influences you know the his gandhian uh, you know uh, ideal 
morals and the military uh, discipline so it kind of a mix of that in you know, a strange mix one would say but then that really did influence me also and also i mean uh, during my early childhood there were a couple of uh, ex, uh, army and air, uh, air force officers one was say, my mother's cousin who was air force officer and there's a army guy who was a paratrooper and nowadays we call special forces so they used to come to the house have family dinners relate their experience so this was all very highly impressionable for a young person and i at some kind i kind of aspired to be into the army Uh, I did attempt NDA uh, but failed. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, as it happens with many children I guess uh, during some time during the schooling period one may drop. So uh, and uh, those days were not that competitive I would say. So probably uh, during my high school days I my studies was a bit lower. And uh, so after not clearing NDA I did not pursue that further too. And I t- went along with what the uh, on everybody seemed to be doing. and i ended up uh, doing mechanical engineering uh, mechanical engineering would be good right so that's how right. i ended up in mechanical i coming out uh, after i joined the gear cutting industry and i was initially in the mechanical engineering side and then went to better development but uh, sometime during that phase my career changed i went into domestic uh, consumer electronics and domestic appliances company called bpl and uh, with that my line from engineering went into supply chain and that was my uh, start of career with supply chain i had and international uh, logistics customs clearance uh, and the work so and from bpl i moved on to motorola uh, about 8 years highly very very interesting period with motorola uh, an mnc early stages uh, and very very nascent stage of the telecom industry and uh, when we started 96 so telecom calls used to be like 10 rupees a minute and uh, that those kind of times and uh, i managed that and uh, with that uh, and from motorola i moved to ericsson and from ericsson i moved back to motorola Motorola and then back to Ericsson again. So I I am blessed. I feel that I joined two company, uh, two organizations, both competing organizations twice over. And that kind of a thing generally happens if you have a very image which is a very client and you know ethically correct uh, image in the industry. So I was blessed with that. Yeah. So those influences, I, as I said, army, uh, military background, and the Gandhian, they kind of had my impressions on me. Right. That's really wonderful. So if I talk about Uh, like your work and experiences how you started your career what all you did so far okay as i mentioned i started the career with uh, being a mechanical engineer in the gear cutting industry that was totally uh, i mean uh, hard to the shop floor with uh, production shop, shop boys and all and but the thing is even now those experiences count even though i moved from that much about 30 years back i moved into areas like supply chain management and stuff but the those early learning that you have and so on working with people managing that giving them leadership that learning is very important that carries you through the life So yes, those are important days, and then from there I moved on to, as I mentioned, to supply chain logistics area with the Indian company and with MNCs. And uh, during those MNC periods, we kind of uh, put up network across India. Uh, I mean, kind of any state in the country, we had put up a tele, uh, tele, mobile telephony system. and that was great experience with that uh, very and uh, some of the experiences with motorola and all i mean so i'll uh, keep at this level then so the thing is i mean with motorola the level of uh, uh, the uh, independence they used to give was pretty very high so very interesting uh, when i joined immediately i, ha- I got a uh, assignment of setting up a repair uh, for export and reimport business and that was totally new there was no proper precedence for that uh, the telecom industry was new what we were trying to do was totally new no precedence at all so with the existing laws we, we convinced the government authorities that what we were doing is within the law and correct and we did that uh, further convincing a few shipments also and we set up the process uh, that process uh, and the execution resulted in such a good customer satisfaction that the company then uh, we had a competition within the organization called total customer satisfaction so tcs they used to call total customer satisfaction so so projects were uh, invited to compete against each other and showcase what they had done so our project was considered the best in india we were sent for a asia pack level uh, challenge in beijing so we went to beijing and beijing again we were considered the best in the 
Asia Pac level. So we competed against most of the countries in the Asia Pac, and uh, there were nine teams from the Asia Pac. Region. So uh, we were considered uh, uh, just the best. From there, we went on to Chicago to represent our division worldwide. There were four teams there from four regions of the world, and again our team was considered the best. And uh, so that from we came back from US, and then again traveled back to US to compete against the inter division. Motorola was a huge 1.5 lakh employees at, during those times, and uh, so there was a, several divisions, about 20 divisions, and there was an inter division competition, and we represented there also. Great. One of the very <laughs> interesting thing was the third level founder family, Mr. Galvin, Chris Galvin, those days. He himself would come and meet each one of us personally and make us feel as if we were the best person in the room. I mean, that kind of a humbleness, simplicity was a kind of a new experience for me. Totally culture shock. You know, from what you see generally with the Indian industrialists going around and all, and to expect such a you know a leader of 1.5 lakh you know uh, head uh, um, organization he coming down and meeting you on a personal level, whereas I was uh, quite a uh, just a officer level guy at that time. So that was a huge experience coming back, and that really charges you up. You want to keep doing much better for the organization. And another very interesting experience I had was uh, there was a tricky assignment uh, to be handled. Motorola US had to execute a delivery to Dhaka, Bangladesh, and the equipment was to come from Shanghai, so uh, from uh, China. So China to Bangladesh, very nearby countries, and yet the uh, the regulations with letter of credit and pre shipment inspection demanded the cargo moves to US first from Shanghai and then comes back to Dhaka. So a huge traveling, you know, about 40 tons. Uh, cargo in aircrafts because it was a expensive equipment. It had to move air. So 40 tons moving from Shanghai to US and back to was seemed very, not very you know best thing to do. Uh, so I was assigned this job. I came up with a solution. Uh, the, the US guys didn't really agree that it could be pulled off, but they said, okay, if you have you think this is can this is doable, please go and execute it. Uh, so I was kind of surprised, but then I said fine. So then I moved to Hong Kong, uh, being a free port. I moved to Hong Kong. Kong, got the consignment from Shanghai into Hong Kong and from Shanghai, uh, from Hong Kong I did all the formalities and from uh, Hong Kong I chartered an aircraft uh, and signed off the papers and then moved the cargo on a special chartered aircraft for which I had signed and then moved it to the Dhaka. So again for a young officer doing all this stuff was a very very you know, challenging and the delegation was huge in those days. So right, fun. great sir. So uh, <laughs> if, I, if I talk about things you are passionate about in your life, so what are mm-hmm. those things? And also onto this, like, what is the role of motivation and inspiration overall in your life? Okay. So when you talk about passionate, I mean, uh, right from childhood, I I mentioned a couple of uh, services guy. One was my mother's cousin, Air Force officer, and another was this paratrooper. They used to come home and talk about their experiences. This right. Air Force officer was a mountaineer also. So, so Air Force used to send him mountaineering. He would do a climb uh, on a mountain in the Himalayas, come back and relate the stories. So these all uh, you know, really uh, inspired me a lot. And later on, just about when I was started the job, I started trying out various adventure activities. So I was really, you know, uh, started with rock climbing, uh, went on to doing wide weight water kayaking. So when the organization had a team, we went to white water. Rafting is something everybody does. And But after a couple of trips, I find, okay, rafting is more very kind of a riding in a bus. So why not try riding on a bike so right. take a kayak a solo kayak down the white water rapid rapid grade four and all that was a huge huge fun and uh, i did a paragliding course got a uh, pilot's uh, license uh, for doing a paraglider and uh, many other active scuba diving off the coast of uh, jera in the uae uh, and uh, several such uh, mostly any adventure activity you know i would not <laughs> let the chance go also, I would try to imbibe this into others, you know, whether they are my colleagues or my subordinates. I should take out them out for group activities and uh, you know, try to impart them. Also, within my family, my nephews, nieces, uh, uh, them too. And I, I like it to see that, you know, some of them have picked it up as their hobby now, uh, adventure sport, and uh, doing mountain climbing or snowboarding or other things. So, yes, um, adventure activity was a huge passion. I, and till the Recently, when I did a solo ride to Ladakh, 
uh, what just about five six years back it was I guess and uh, so that was again a kind of a self challenge I was just out of about a year out of a you know angioplasty and but then I kind of wanted to prove myself that I'm okay so I <laughs> took my bike out and went out in a so you keep on challenging yourself yes so that's a fun thing. yeah yeah really awesome so you have been like on to all type of adventure activities fun thrill excitement challenges yeah. really wonderful so uh, now sir if i talk about your vision mission and goal in life so what that would be for next 5 10 years from now okay put it simply now i'm kind of you know uh, though i came out of the corporate world about 7 uh, years back i took a step out and uh, being i was in the in in C- delhi and cr and but i left it and settled down in kerala kannur but then uh, out of choice but then having done that it's kind of you know how can you sit idle how can so one has to be usefully productively you know engaged and so i started you know some uh, entrepreneurship of mine i am into electric vehicle field and uh, also with the local community uh, i am uh, working with the you know my curated a renewable energy seminar uh, so in some ways or other i keep myself engaged and uh, so the mission uh, as you asked is that uh, to be gainfully productively useful to, to the society in general till probably my end <laughs> as possible to the end of the life wonderful so you have been working on ev uh, i wanted to talk about that but we will be talking about that very soon next time i have okay. certain uh, like thoughts about it so we would mm-hmm. be keeping it in a different way uh, okay. but but today we would be talking about other things so uh, before that i would also like to uh, know what are the most important life lessons you have learned in your life from personal and professional both okay uh, uh, to put it simply i think uh, uh, for that take away that i have got from life be true to oneself keep it simple you know be true to oneself okay if you are the corporate traits that there may be others in the organization in the same position as you who may be you know be able to talk more or have a more glamorous uh, you know, style of uh, speaking or something that, that all will you know kind of help in the short run might help in the short run the long run the core value of what you do what you actually execute is what remains so that that's one part and then i also believe in you know keeping a legacy which is positive and uh, be positive to people around and uh, as much as possible you know, so that is my core uh, take away from this life till now right nice really important that you should be like work with basics and these are really important thing in life right so sir if i uh, ask you like uh, you've been very uh, focused on working on governance ethics and compliance so on to this if i ask you how does a strong culture of governance ethics and compliance contribute to a long term success and sustainability of an organization okay see compliance is a, something you know uh, having worked with the government regulatory agencies and all compliance is a very uh, Uh, strong subject and also is in the organization so moving on when i was in the uh, indian organization and moving on to a mnc like motorola motorola in by uh, forces so much compliance down to you and uh, it kind of covers every aspect of what you do and uh, how you behave and how you work so that does take you for a long period i mean you, if you take it to the indian ex- uh, context the indian industry uh, there may be certain companies who have been very very successful in the recent time uh but then those successful companies may have a sudden fall too you no know, possibly by juice is an example i mean we see i mean we saw by all over the place i mean we saw them uh, sponsoring the indian cricket team and but right now they are we are speaking of it in a different context altogether so, right right so that that's it. on the other hand if you if you were if i was to ask you which is one company indian company in the past 200 years which would come to the mind as a highly ethical company uh, i would expect you know would be tata, tata. <laughs> right so i mean past 150 200 i mean come what me there are other companies which have come and gone but they remain true i mean they kind of embody the indians uh, that it of being compliant i mean i was if you talk about ratan tata in the current living industrial person probably the most uh, highly regarded respected individual yes, that we have I mean, indeed that comes that that comes from that culture and that is how they have grown the so long term sustenance that's what it brings the uh, culture of compliance and ethics so right that's key to it 
Right. So we see uh, Tata Group as a very ethical, very uh, governance-oriented and compliance-oriented organization. So, uh, if I ask you, like, what are some key challenges organization face in maintaining high ethical standards and ensure compliance with regulations and industries uh, like best practices to follow? Okay. Yeah. So it's a very really challenging atmosphere. I mean, uh, out there when businesses are operating and they are operating against competition and they may be operate so. And there is a huge pressure to perform, to deliver results, and all. And sometimes along this way, you know, the compliance is relegated to a secondary position, is set aside. And Ooh. so that's the challenge. So the, from an organization perspective, that's a very big challenge to give results and yet be compliant. So uh, that's a very big challenge. And uh, also, uh, you know, uh, to remember, an organization is the people, right? And the people are coming, people are going. You know, there, there might be a flow of people coming and going. And uh, the organization culture could be the sum total of all the people in that organization. So how do you impart that culture down to the every person? That's a big challenge by itself also. I go from a company which where we did do certain compromises, if you may, right? I mean, handling certain situations in a government situation. I mean, one might, uh, then I would be, I might be asked to execute something, uh, maybe spend a little for that execution, but save more in the end okay uh, that's a, but those kind of decisions are kind of hard to take right but then if you are very clear in a, that come what may the ethics and integrity and the compliance is to be followed come what may whatever that's the way. then the matter gets very clear and on the long term one doesn't get into a you know uh, issues with the authorities so i always believe that the long term is also always the better and also the challenge of the organization is this you know maintaining the position in the market correct competition is really huge and you have to be like yeah. always active on these issues these these issues we, we cannot say issues but requirements basically for the organizations so how on to this like further if i ask you like how can organization foster a culture of uh, accountability mm-hmm. and transparency to promote ethical behavior and compliance okay. through all the levels in the in the organization okay uh, now uh, again uh, since we have started the discussion you know i can remember a couple of incidents you know uh, again uh, talking about control now one was we every quarter or so we used to have some kind of a course we had to undergo i mean it used to be called un- Com- compromising integrity, ethics right. and compliance. I mean, these kind of courses we had to do and we had to sign off that everything. So that is one kind of a commitment that you do on a regular basis that you are working with them. And that, uh, it was mandatory. It was right. mandatory. You had to sign it up. So that kind of reminded you. And so that's one part. The second part is, uh, you know, I mean, uh, 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 take for example, uh, one I'm taking out a very simple a simple exercise uh, you one used to go to a tre- team lunches now in certain ag- organization what would happen is you do a team lunch you come out with a hefty bill maybe some beers and stuff and uh, you round up a bill one of the guys will sign it and the manager who happens to be in the same mi- meeting would actually counter sign it and pass it on now it's already put up with one guy approved by his manager and it puts goes into the system and the company kind of reimburses it okay but the, uh, in a uh, organization mutra they had a strict rule who the list of a person attending the lunch should be provided and the senior most most person has to sign uh, has to put up the bill once the senior most person put up puts up the bill then it has to be approved by the guy who was not in that meeting right okay his supervisor or maybe yeah. his supervisor who was, yeah who was not in that lunch what happens is somebody who was not in the lunch approves it and then so the compliance comes very automatically and uh, there is a very less chance for a connivance or you know uh, between the sub- and so those kind of things are eliminated. This was a right. very, uh, so what I'm saying is this at a very operational level and a culture level. On the other level, at a very senior level, uh, when I, I can remember an incident that uh, oh, it, again it was a time when telecom industry was opening up and uh, there was a huge mad rush to bag major contracts and uh, there was a certain compromise done to acquire a customer. Okay, uh, so the acquisition happened, it was executed, but then the there was a compromise and that 
came to know by the parent organization when the parent organization comes to know about this issue then we knew that the some heads are going to roll okay some heads is going to roll because it ha- happened due to a non compliance way and we expected a second level guy he would be the scapegoat and his head would go and not the top guy who de- took the decision i mean we expected right. that but no that did not happen so what we saw was the actually the top guy was taken off and very very fast and very abruptly he was taken off so the message down the line was very clear and this top guy was a most the most successful ceo that we ever had i mean in that organization most successful ceo and uh, he had got the, got the major contract and all and yet he was shown the door why just because he compromised while acquiring a customer so uh, so the message was very clear you, you have to follow the rules no matter what so so organization has to lead by example and right. then they, they have to put up the processes which enables the everybody to follow in proper i think that's the dual key that you have if you on the top if the employee see that the company is doing shortcuts to gain some uh, market share or to save some taxation he will think okay if the company can do it i can also do it and then the culture of you know corruption goes up in such a way so one it has to be uncompromising right the challenges are there but the only yes. thing which can help sustain the organization is the the ethical behavior followed at all levels and the uh, the compliance governance should be followed at each level from bottom to top that is really crucial for the success of any organization right sir so coming back to you again if i ask you like what is your take on success what are your views thoughts about it success uh, to me is i mean uh, uh, yeah, on one side yeah it does get measured in different ways by different people so it need not be the same to all as, as your, even your question implies what does it means to me so yes to me the success is when a person is at peace with oneself at what where he is and what he is doing. it could be in the rat race also i mean if he is happy doing that so be it and if he is moving ahead on the so be it but then he should be happy doing that right he should be at peace doing that and uh, else if he is moved out and he is doing something else so that is also success and also leave a positive legacy behind you and uh, that's also very important so these two are probably the measures as far as i'm concerned right right so on to a uh, last one any message or advice you would like to share with our uh, viewers and listeners okay uh, talking again since our theme has been governance and compliance i think the compliance other than the corporate compliance personal con- compliance it also should be compliance in every aspect of the life we have become in general a corrupt society if you may right a certain amount of bribing giving or taking kind of accept it should come out of that i mean things should work towards you know the way it should it supposed to be i mean i in a way i would say uh, having lived in many parts of the country um, delhi jaipur gurugram no kerala uh, what i find is definitely this society here it is definitely better in terms of that i uh, in the past 7 years many government offices i have been to i never had a occasion to you know do anything with anybody right i mean uh, that's i think really uh, kind of really great in a way uh, so that you know how to do things and it's very clear so the, the same and the culture has to come across it has to perpetuate everywhere and where we should be able to live in a very very uh, or how should i say school society and be able to get things done yeah correct really is important in all aspect right and, so and uh, uh, one other last message also i would like to give is uh, be the right human i mean the uh, being a good human being is very important and also uh, be very clear in differentiating fact from what is shown as a fa- sha- fact of propaganda beat anybody beat anybody But, uh, nowadays with lot of social media moving around and stuff lot of stuff being thrown into the uh, social media it's yeah. very important to t- judge and be uh, clear as to what are the actual numbers and what are not what are just interesting. right it's it's responsibility of everybody to share ethical thing ethical. and also a uh, thing which they are sharing should be uh, like true to itself yes but not sharing fake things and all something like that absolutely absolutely right sir so it, i must say like we had a wonderful discussion it was really amazing to hear you and there are so many things i'd like to talk about 
uh, with you but probably in next uh, session or next interview okay. or maybe discussion we will do that and uh, i really enjoyed the discussion we had today you have shared your story how you started your career what all you did and also how you are working on your uh, startup as well and also you have shared very uh, like uh, useful information relating to the governance culture ethics and uh, compliance which is really an important integral part of success to any organization uh, not only the organization but we can implement them in personal life as well so really important from that perspective so i really enjoyed this uh, discussion really uh, knowledgeable and uh, like meaningful discussion we had so thank you so very much sir i'm looking forward to uh, hear more from you again soon thank you sir thanks indira thanks for the opportunity and also sir i would like to share your social media link so that people can be in touch with you take your help and guidance sure. also wherever they feel like so guys don't okay. forget to check that out too thank you so very much everyone for watching and listening i hope you all must have gathered a lot of information and enjoyed watching it don't forget to like share and subscribe have a good time and thank you